Okay, let, let's just you know I've been I've been thinking about this all week uh, and for so I would say arguably you come from the nicest uh, mother and father on the planet. Like they are two of the <laughs> most kind-hearted people I've ever met. Um, yeah, every seen. every time I see them, like both, I legit give them a, a real visceral hug and it's like man i love you two people as human beings you're great so how you know and knowing you and your brother and your sister like you guys are i wouldn't if i saw you any of you in a crowd i would be like nope not a fighter not a fighter super cool guy fuck yeah i would party with him um so how do you how do you go from being raised like that and kind of having that demeanor that you kind of walk through in life to wanting to or enjoying the art of whether it be martial arts mma or basically you know punching somebody in the face like what what kind of got you into the mixed martial arts world yeah well i mean you know me and ryan both got into it he's a jiu-jitsu brown belt now um so it's something that just like captured both of us when we were young and i think it's just like you know it's it's little steps at a time like my dad was always really into like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. So those were the movies that we were raised up on. And then me and Ryan were always uh, like fighting with each other. So we got put into Kung Fu when we were really young. And then that turned into Pee Wee wrestling and it just went step by step. We were always into martial arts. Um, And then for me, it just developed into the MMA game. And then he went the more jujitsu route. But like for me, uh, like, fighting and competing and doing all this stuff. It was never about having any anger or anything like that. I know that's the case with a lot of guys. And I do train with a lot of guys who started at least as a way to like purge frustration and anger. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, man, for me, like if you look at people like, like Bruce Lee or like any of like the, uh, like Muhammad Ali or, or any of like the, the old kind of like ninjas, the samurais that they're not, they're not, overtly aggressive or angry people and it was something that i wanted to just like find out about myself i guess i don't know if you remember um back in the day when we were at parties in high school and stuff like that and scraps would always break out that was always something that i just found super fascinating like not in a not in an angry way not anything like that just i wanted to do it to find something out about myself so i was always drawn to like the little party scraps and stuff like that. Even if I wasn't involved, which a lot of times I wasn't, it was, it was interesting just to watch and watch like the human interaction, the dynamics that happen around fights. And then, uh, and then, yeah, man, like once you start getting into it and, uh, it is a little bit like, uh, that fight club quote where he's like, how much do you, how much do you really know about yourself? if you have never been in a fight. Yeah. And you can know plenty about yourself if you've never been in a fight, but definitely like it, uh, it brings up emotions and it's a way of like going deep into yourself and figuring out how you handle high pressure situations, very scary situations, physical assaults, all stuff like that. And when I was young, man, I always kind of considered myself as a tough guy and then, uh, not an angry guy, just tough. Sure. I can handle myself. And then uh, I walked into a jujitsu studio and I got tapped over and over and over again. And then I walked into MMA and I got the shit kicked out of me over and over and over again. And I was like, all right, so either one of two things is going to have to happen. I got to stop telling myself that I can handle myself and that I'm tough guy. And I have to just like deal with that or I have to start training and actually like commit myself to this um, until I become, you know, until till I feel comfortable telling myself that. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah. You, you started like the, uh, the reality of, you know, what you're telling yourself, that mantra in your head started meeting reality and you're, you're like, okay, either I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to succumb this bullshit or it's going to beat my ass over and over and over again. So that's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, and and I, I saw that all the time, man, like, especially in Durango, not, not even so much here, but in Durango, the martial arts scoot studio was right down the street from Hilltop, mm-hmm. the halfway house. Yeah. So we would always get um, like fresh out of jail convicts that had the exact same thing. They told themselves that they were tough, uh, partly because they were just in jail and they'd come down to 
come down to the dojo and want to fight right away. And all, all that we would do, do you remember a girl named Nico Montano? It was mm-hmm. uh, Steve Hanna's girlfriend at the time. Yeah. She ended up becoming the first uh, 125 pound UFC champ. Yeah. But she was a beast even back then. And so we would sick her on these guys. And uh, you could see the like, uh, exactly what you said, like what they have in their head doesn't match reality anymore because they had just gotten the shit kicked out of them by a girl half their size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I see that. <laughs> like, no, I'm not throwing shade on any, any female fighter, but yeah, to come in as a, you know, a 200 pound man to just get murdered by a tiny little woman. And she's, you know, she's mm-hmm. a sweetheart, but, uh, she knows what she's doing. So I can imagine that's a blow to the ego and, and a, a, yep. a, a shock to reality, you know? So 